conductors. How are you? Today we are going to cover GT Javi 2022 questions in pharmacology. Who so starts? The first question regarding sort of how find out the true and false statement. I got four options and then answer you have to choose. Sort of all, safe in in failure? No, false statement. Sort of all, a non-selective beta blocker undergoes renal root of excretion, so unsafe in kidney failure. Sort of all, option B, can cause QT prolongation? Yes, true statement. Actually, sort of all, even though a beta blocker the sort of having potassium channel blocking property. Any drug having potassium blocking property may cause QT prolongation. So, sort of may cause QT prolongation is a true statement. It is a class 3 antivigation. Yes, true statement. Actually speaking, beta blocker mean we call class 2 anti arrhythmic agent. But, even though sotalol is a beta blocker, because of having potassium blocking property, sotalol classified under class 3. Now you should know, among the anti agent, class 1A drug and class 3 drug are having potassium blocking property also. Because of that, these two class of drug may cause QT prolongation as side effects. Okay. And sort of all useful for both ventricular tachycardia and atrial fibrillation. Yeah, class 3 drug can be useful for both atrial as well as ventricular because of beta blocking property as well as potassium blocking property. Mm -hmm. It is useful for both atrial and ventricular mias to statement. So the answer will be option number 1. Okay. Now coming to the second question. A 54 year old woman present her physician with the complaints of Difficulty in sleeping and decreased appetite. She no longer find enjoyment in her habits like golf. Her doctor would like to start her on antidepressant medication. But this patient currently on tamoxifen for breast cancer. And listener pill for the treatment of high BP. Which of the following antidepressant contraindicated in this patient? A very interesting question also. Patient is having depression, so you want to start her on antidepressant. But the patient already on some drug therapy like tamoxifen and also lisnopril. In this patient, which antidepressant contraindicated? Here you should know there is one interaction between tamoxifen and one antidepressant. What is that? The answer is fluoxetine. Actually, fluoxetine, one of the SSRI, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. The fluoxetine having the property of inhibiting CYP2D6 enzyme. This is important point. Fluoxetine having the property of inhibiting CYP2D6. And here, tamoxifen is one of the SCRO, selective estrogen receptor modulator. Useful for treatment of breast cancer. But for breast cancer action, tamoxifen needs activation. Here a question. Tamoxifen activated with the help of activated with the help of CYP2D6 enzyme. Now the question starts. If we give fluoxetine in a patient with some tamoxifen therapy, fluoxetine inhibit this enzyme. When the enzyme inhibitor, tamoxifen will not activate it. If it is not activated, it is not going to be useful. So, fluoxetin chondra indicator along with the tamoxifen. So, answer is option number B. So, A, B, C, D. Answer B, fluoxetin. Okay, other drug have no such interaction with the tamoxifen. That's the answer. Next, anyway, for combustion purpose, S. param one of the SSRI. Trasodone, a 5-ST2 antagonist, antidepressant. Venlafaxin, one of the SNR group of antidepressant. Right. Drugs recently approved for amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. 
like one option, four option, and then answer A, B, C, like that, you have to go through. This is a straight question. Drugs approved for treatment of A myotrophy lateral sclerosis. It's called ALS. For treating ALS, we have two important drugs. One is called Riluzone. And one more drug we have called Edaravon. These are the two drugs was approved for treatment of ALS. So, answer A also right, answer C also right. That means A and C are right. That means option number C is the right answer. Now here, what is Rylozole? Rylozole actually is an NMDA blocker. NMDA blocker. Then what is Edaravone? Edaravone is an antioxidant. Antioxidant useful for ALS. So, two FDA approved drug for treatment of ALS includes Edaravone, antioxidant, Rylozole, a NMD blocker. Then what is option B? Pyrocetum. Pyrocetum, a cognitive enhancer, is going to improve brain function, thinking capacity, all this thing. Mitomycin, we know it's an anti-cancer drug. It's not for ALS, it's an anti-cancer drug. Mitomycin C as an anti-cancer drug, useful for treatment of, useful for treatment of urinary bladder cancer. And it is also useful topically for treatment of a laryngotracheal stenosis. Not only for laryngotracheal stenosis, mitomycin C also useful for treating esophageal stenosis and useful to prevent post-nasal surgical sinicae formation. Now the wonderful question, mitomycin C able to prevent the fibrosis, able to prevent stenosis, by what mechanism? See, mitomycin here, see having anti-fibroblast action. Because of inhibiting fibroblast activity useful for controlling stenosis. Next question. A 29-year-old woman complaining of migraineous headache associated with early onset of vomiting. Currently, she uses ibuprofen as needed for her migraine. But, but it is not very effective. Which tripton would be the ideal for this patient? See, migraine is headache, we know problem due to vasodilatation. So, for treating the migraine, we need a vasoconstrictor. Vasoconstrictor. Triptons are wonderful vasoconstrictor. We have something called 5-HT-1-BD agonist. They are called triptons. They are the very good drug of choice for treatment of acute migraine. But the question here, all the options are tripton, tripton, tripton. So, which is the best for this patient? This patient is having migraine headache with early onset of vomiting. So, here, if we give tripton orally, Already vomiting is there, so not comfortable. So I, I want a trifton that can be used other than oral roots. In that way, I had to think. So among the four options, the best is Zolmi trifton because it can be used as an inland as a spray form. In that way, option B is the best answer. Anyway, for treating acute migraine, currently the drug of choice will be 5 st one bd agonist. What are the 5 st one bd agonist available for treatment of acute migraine? For example, we have a lot and lot of triptons like Sumatripton, Risatripton, Almotripton, Fravatripton, Zolmitripton like that. Just to go through the property of each triptons. Smart Tripton, a wonderful Tripton, useful for treating headache as well as it has anti-emitic property, able to suppress vomiting. But in this case, they are not given option Smart Tripton. Okay, so migraine headache with vomiting means the best Tripton Smart Tripton because having anti-emitic property also. But in your question, this option is not there. That's why I gone for Sobe Tripton. Okay. And small tripton also available in addition to oral roots. It is also available as a injection, some cute injection, also nasal, intranasal root also. And what about Risa tripton? Risa tripton, a fastest acting agent and highest efficacy drug. Almo tripton having highest oral bioavailability. Fravon tripton having long half life. It's old question. 
which is the tevton is the longest acting and so forever tevton and finally zolmi tevton this is also can be used oral as well as intranasal so the two tevton that can be used intranasal route are one is suma tevton and zolmi tevton that's why if there is a headache with the vomiting best to go for suma tevton if not next option go for zolmi tevton next which one of the following drug useful in bronchial asthma targeting against interleukin 4 options are tralokinumab dupilumab fibiprant mometazone so i answer a antibody useful for asthma that to targeting against il4 we know called dupilumab dupilumab a monoclonal antibody targeting against il4 okay Whereas tralokinumab is IL-13 blocker. What is PVP brand? It's a newer drug. It's under trial. It's a prostaglandin D2 antagonist. It is under trial. Under trial for treatment of asthma. Mometazone is steroid. Can be useful to control the asthma. Steroids are acting by inhibiting phospholipase A2. Steroid useful in asthma for controlling inflammation. Steroid as an anti-inflammatory agent acting by inhibiting phospholipase A2. And these two are important. That is, what are all the monoclonal antibody useful for asthma? I'm going to discuss now. Anyway, answer for the question is dupilumab. Now, for combination purpose, please note there are so many many monoclonal antibody useful for treatment of asthma. For example. We have one very famous drug called omalizumab. Omalizumab is an antibody targeting against targeting against IgE. IgE. The other monoclonal antibody useful for bronchial asthma are dupilumab. It's an interleukin 4 blocker targeting against IL4. Interleukin 4 blocker. This drug also approved for treatment of atopic dermatitis. Then we have some more MABs. For example, there are some monoclonal body targeting against IL-5, interleukin-5 blockers. For example, we have Mepolizumab, Reslizumab, Bendralizumab. These three are monoclonal body targeting against interleukin-5. Useful plasma. In this one more important question, the Mepolizumab in addition to asthma, it can also be useful for treatment of Chuck Tross syndrome. Chuck Tross syndrome. It is one of the adverse effects associated with the Montelukas, leukotriene receptor antagonist. In Chuck Tross syndrome, symptoms will be headache, eosinophilia, vasculitis. So, mepolism is useful for treatment of asthma as well as useful for controlling symptoms of Chuck Tross syndrome, one of the adverse effects of Montelukas. And finally, we have interleukin-13 blockers also available for treatment of asthma. That include tralokinumab and lebricuzumab. So, tralokinumab, lebricuzumab are MAB targeting against interleukin-13. That means you should know there are so many, many monoclonal antibodies are available for treatment of asthma. Next, regarding pyoglitazone, zone, find out the True statement asking find out the true statement. Pyoglitazone chondro indicate kidney failure? No, no, no. It is not a true statement. It's a false statement. Okay. It can be used in kidney failure. Can be used in active liver disease? No, false statement. In active liver disease, it is contraindicated. Okay. And common moderate to severe heart failure. Yes. Yes. In heart failure, pyoglitazone unsafe. A uh, true statement. Pyogenitis having increased risk of bone fracture. Yes, especially in post menopausal women, there is a risk, high risk of causing osteoporosis. So C and D are true statement. That may answer option number A. Remember the first two points. Actually, what Goodman Gilman says, pyogenitis zone. It is one of the important anti-diabetic agent. It's a PPAR gamma agonist. It's an insulin sensitizer. Insulin sensitizer. This drug undergoes metabolism in the liver. 
So it is contraindicated in active liver disease. And pyridazone can be used in renal insufficiency patients also, but unsafe in liver failure. Regarding option C and D, look at it. We know pyridazone and drug for diabetes. What are the important adverse effects? This drug causes most importantly fluid retention. One of the most common problems causing fluid retention. Because of this, it causes weight gain and edema. Sometimes they cause macular edema also. So sometimes they must image based question. They will give image. This is retinal image. For example, in this is called macular edema. So they may give this image and asking you, this is the adverse effect caused by one anti-diabetic drug. What drug? Answer pyridazone, diagnosis macular edema. And then pyridazone may also cause anemia and this point important. Chronic therapy of pyridazone may cause heart failure. That's why you should know pyridazone contraindicated in patients with moderate to severe heart failure. In this patient, it is contraindicated. And one more point, pyridazone may disturb the calcium metabolism, so risk of osteoporosis, thereby risk of bone fractures. Especially in post-menopausal women, there is high risk of causing osteoporosis and bone fracture. Rarely, pyridazone can cause urinary bladder cancer also. It's a rare problem, but keep it in mind. Next question. A 30-year-old man with a human immunodeficiency viral infection being treated with an antiretroviral regimen. Four weeks after initiating therapy, he presented to emergency department complaining of fever, rash and GI upset. His HLB5701 test is positive. Which drug most likely causing this complication? So very classical question for central institute examination. Look here. Patient is a known HIV patient. Start around anti retroviral therapy. Following the regimen, developing skin rashes, fever, GI symptom, but his gene HLB5701 is positive. One interesting question. There is an anti retroviral agent. In this gene patient causes severe hypersensitivity reaction. Sometimes causing Steven Johnson, that drug name is Abacavir. Abacavir, one of the nucleoside reverse transcriptase enzyme inhibitor, this Abacavir in HLA-B5701 gene, in this gene patient having risk of causing Steven Johnson syndrome. May cause Steven John syndrome, severe fever, severe skin rashes, even severe GI problem. Okay, so this is very important. Abacavir unsafe in patient with the HLB5701 gene. That's why whenever you want to prescribe Abacavir, first to do genetic screening test, rule out HLB5701 gene. Extra point, Abacavir may also cause adverse effect of sudden microinfarction. But one point, abacavir will safe in kidney failure. Most of the NRTI are unsafe in kidney failure, whereas abacavir will safe in kidney failure. That's the extra point. Coming to other option, zerovudine also one of the nucleoside reverse transcriptase enzyme inhibitor. This drug causing most commonly myelosuppression problem in the form of macrocytic anemia. If I have an NRTI, this death may cause adverse effect of neuropsychosis. And there in navir, any drug ending with the navir, navir, sacri navir, indi navir, der navir, navir mean protease inhibitor, they may cause adverse effect of hyperglycemia, hyperlipidemia, fat redistribution, lipodystrophy like this. That's a common adverse effect of most of the protease enzyme inhibitors. Next question. Match of following anti-cancer drug with their corresponding preventive measures for their toxicity. In column A, a given drug name, column B, the toxicity amelioration drugs. Now, options are brucellophone, cisplatin, dothrivisin, pemetrexin. Now, inside, right side, they given antidote. You have to choose. Very simple. 
If we good in subject, you can straight go. Otherwise, easy way. Look at easy way. P metrexed. It's like methotrexate, antifolate, antifolate. For antifolate, anti is folic acid. So this is very simple. Four main answer C. Doxorubicin, yeah, antibiotic, anti-cancer drug causing adverse effect of cardiotoxicity. To control the cardiotoxicity, we have one specific antidote called dexrapsosin. So three main answer B. Dexraxon is an iron chelator, iron chelator, useful to control the adverse effect of dog servicing. Next, cisplatin is an important anti-cancer drug, causes adverse effect of nephrotoxicity, nephrotoxicity. So, to control this, we have one specific antidote called amifastin. So, to mean answer A. Amifastin antidote for cisplatin. And amifastin also having radioprotective property, radioprotective action also extra point. It's an antidote for cisplatin as well as radioprotector. And last stone mood, brusulfan. Go for D fluid. One main answer D. Actually, brusulfan, a alkylating agent, may cause adverse effect of thrombosis. Thrombosis. Especially causing hepatic vein thrombosis called VOD, Veno Occlusive Disease of Liver, also called Bacchari Syndrome. Alkylating agent may cause adverse effect of Veno Occlusive Disease of Liver. It is called Hepatic Vein Thrombosis called Bacchari Syndrome. So to control the thrombosis, we use d fibrotide d fibrotide is an anti-thrombotic agent. It's an anti-thrombotic agent. So, it can be useful for controlling thrombosis problem due to alkylating agent. That means, go for D, A, B, C. The answer will be D, A, B, C. Like option A is the right answer. Now, come in next question. Ah, this also. Uh, for example, regarding anti-cancer drugs, for some anti-cancer drug, we have specific antidote. For example, for methotrexate, the specific antidote is folinic acid. It is also called this leucoorin. It's a specific antidote. Doxorubicin, the antibody, anti-cancer drug causing cardiotoxicity. For this antidote, it is dexrafosin. It's an iron chelator. It's an iron chelator. And then cyclovasomide, very important. It's also alkylating agent causing adverse effect of hemorrhagic cystitis. Hemorrhagic cystitis. To control this, we have an antidote called mesna. Mesna is the specific antidote for cyclovasmine. And cisplatin, I told already, causing nephrotoxicity. To control this, the antidote is amifastin. Amifastin. Amifastin also having radioprotective property. And so most of the anti-cancer drug causing mouth ulcer, mucosal ulcer. For treating the ulcer, we can use one drug called palipermin. So, palifermin useful for controlling mucosal ulcer problem. That's about some, for some anti-cancer drug, we have some specific antidote. Okay. Next. One of the following drug targeting against CD25. What is that? So, even all the options are antibodies, you have to choose the target. So, which is the antibody in this question targeting against CD25? The answer is Basiliximab. Basiliximab. And one more drug called Daclizumab. Daclizumab. Both are immunosuppressant, immunosuppressant targeting against the CD25. Okay. Whereas other option, Rituximab, a very important drug useful for so many things, cancer, immunology. This is targeting against the CD25. Targeting against against C20. Brentuximab targeting against C30. This is useful for heart chickens lymphoma. Important drug for heart chickens lymphoma. Targeting against C30. Alentuximab targeting against C52. So very good drug for treatment of multiple sclerosis. Okay. So very good drug for treatment of multiple sclerosis. Targeting against C52. So, this model question, 
regarding monoclonal antibody and the target they are asking frequently so please revise this question and then subluxation lens is an adverse effect caused by which one of following drug options are vigabatrin tamoxifen amiodarone and acriplasmin the right answer is acriplasmin acriplasmin is important drug useful for treatment of vitreo macular adhesion useful for treatment of vitreo adhesion but may cause adverse effect of subluxation lens subluxation that is dislocation of lens okay vigabatrin it's a gaba transaminase gaba transaminase inhibitor is an anti epileptic agent useful for treatment of infantile spasm with tuberous sclerosis this drug may cause adverse effect of field of vision defect visual visual field defect field of vision defect field defect tamoxifen acrm may cause crystalline maculopathy amiodarone causes cornea verticillata these two thing i'll show photograph look here first two photograph look at this it's a case of vitreous macular joining it's called vitreo macular adhesion for treating this case we have one drug called acriplasmin this drug may cause adverse effect of subluxation of lens and then this is a case of cornea verticillata also called vertex keratopathy look at this straight straight line in cornea it is called wh oral oral like pattern cornea caused by amiodarone and then this is called crystalline maculopathy adverse effect caused by tamoxifen like that image based questions also important regarding ophthalmic pharmacology i think all the 10 question i completed i think is very useful for you so make use of it